Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the hardware review for the Samsung Galaxy S2, Samsung's flagship smartphone for 2011. Let's get to it. So again, this is the European version that comes to us from clove.co.uk. They're shipping the device right now, but it will also work on AT&T in the US. It is a quad band GSM, quad band UMTS phone. So for those keeping track, that is the 850, 1900, 900, and 2100 bands meaning it will work in Europe, it'll work uh, in the US on AT&T as mentioned, it'll also work on T-Mobile in the US, but not on 3G. It's very likely that we're gonna see this phone released on all major carriers, so if you don't wanna pay 700 plus dollars for this right now, uh, just wait, it's gonna probably be available at a subsidized price in the near future on a carrier, because the carriers are gonna want this phone. It is pretty badass. Uh, let's talk about specs. It's got a dual core 1.2 gigahertz Samsung Exynos processor. It's their brand new chip. Previously in the Galaxy S line of devices, we saw the Hummingbird chip clocking in at one gigahertz. Of course, that was single core. So they made a huge jump in terms of cores and clock speed here for the Samsung Galaxy S2. Of course, Samsung's not alone. Uh, Qualcomm is doing their 1.2 gigahertz Snapdragon, which is gonna show up in the HTC next wave of devices, the Sensation, the Sensation 4G, the Sprint Evo 3D. And then we've got NVIDIA working with Motorola on the Tegra 2 uh, on the device, on devices like the Atrix 4G and the upcoming Droid Bionic on Verizon. The Tegra 2 clocks in at one gigahertz dual core. We can't really compare clock speeds because as you know in the desktop world you could get a, a chip that's a faster clock speed and it's slower than a, a, ch a different chip with a lower clock speed. So we really have to look at day-to-day -day usage and we're going to do a lot of benchmarks here on uh, the Galaxy S2. In terms of RAM we get a full gigabyte of RAM for multitasking. That is a tremendous amount of RAM. HTC sort of maxed out at 768. Their next generations of, generations of phones are going to have one gigabyte but we get it right now in the Galaxy S2. Uh, just like the Atrix 4G has a gigabyte of RAM. Internal storage gets 16 gigabytes, though you can of course expand that if you get a micro SD card. Um, so we have got Bluetooth 3.0, uh, we've got Wi-Fi A, it's hard to remember, it's A, B, and G, of course. Uh, this is DivX compatible. It's got two cameras, the one on the front shoots at two megapixels, which is actually pretty high for a front-facing camera. It's also a larger lens, so it lets in a lot of light. We're going to see in the full review on Pocket now uh, that the front-facing camera takes really good photos. On the back, which we're going to see in a minute, we have an 8-megapixel camera with a flash that can record 1080p video. Uh, these next-generation dual-core processors can take advantage of uh, the full 1080p resolution, and this phone can even play back 1080p if you connect it to a panel. Uh, you need a special accessory to make that happen, but we'll talk more about that soon. Uh, this is running on Android 2.3, the latest gingerbread, which is nice. We've got DLNA support, uh, so you can beam your content to uh, TVs and whatnot wirelessly if you want. So let's take a look at the hardware of the device. It's a very shiny front, so you're going to see a lot of reflections happen. It's kind of hard to avoid. Uh, but the front is just this nice piece of glass, and we know it's glass if we take a little piece of metal here, coin, and you can hear that it is absolutely glass. So a really high quality screen here. And we've got a very interesting design. It looks just like the Galaxy S, the original, where we have the button in the center, kind of like an iPhone actually. And then we've got two Android buttons here, back and home. And what's kind of cool, like the Nexus S, when the, when the Galaxy S2 is off, you don't see any buttons. You just see this Darth Vader-like dark display, this massive piece of glass that covers the front. And it looks really, really good. So up here we've got the two megapixel camera, proximity sensor, light sensor, earpiece. Then we've got the screen, which is 4.3 inches diagonal. The resolution is 800 down and 480 across. Now, this is the only downside to these uh, higher end specifications. We don't get the QHD display that we're getting on the next wave of devices, which is of course 960 down by 540 across. So not that big of a deal. We've got the Super AMOLED Plus panel here, which we're going to compare uh, to the previous generation AMOLED in a second. Now down here, of course, we've got the home button, and it's nice to have a, a dedicated hardware button. It actually clicks in when you press it, which is nice. Let's try to bring it up here. So it has a nice clicky sound to it, and it automatically turns on uh, when you press it. And then, as mentioned, these, these uh, other Android buttons only turn on when you actually turn on the phone. 
So let's go to the side here. This device is incredibly, remarkably, amazingly thin. And everyone that I've, I've had hold this device it says the same thing. They look at it from the front and they're like, oh, it's just another slab phone. And I said, well, well actually hold it in your hand. They hold it in their hand and they are floored by how thin this is. Uh, if you take four quarters, if you want to try this at home to see how thick it is, this is actually thinner than four quarters. Uh, it is about 8.5, 8.4 millimeters thin. It is the thinnest smartphone on the planet right now. It's thinner than the iPhone 4, thinner than the Desire HD, you name it. This phone is incredibly thin. And it is also very lightweight. And yet the remarkable thing is that it doesn't feel cheap in hand. In hand, it has a good solid feel. Y you might think it might twist a little bit, but if we try to twist it, don't try this at home, it's a very solid phone. It doesn't have aluminum unibody construction like the HTC phones, but it is strong and rigid nonetheless. Okay, let's go uh, around the side here. We've got a volume up and down rocker on the left side of the device. We've got the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Dual microphone here for noise cancellation. We'll have to test that to see how good it is. Uh, over here, we've got the power standby button. Kind of a nice location on the right so that you can actually you know, press it with your thumb if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, that's a different story. Uh, going back over here, we've got the port for micro USB the first microphone. We've got the speaker back here. We don't have dual speakers, but the audio on this phone in terms of speaker phone and playing music is actually really good. And even at maximum volume, the speaker doesn't distort, which is quite a feat. So up here, we've got the eight megapixel camera, which will do 1080p video, quite impressive. We'll have full video samples coming up soon. We've got a nice LED flash there, not dual LED. I think they're gonna start scaling back from dual LED because that's just too much light uh, for, for a smartphone. There's the nice big camera sensor. We can try to take off the back battery cover. They don't make it easy. Okay, here it goes. It's, it's plastic, totally plastic, extremely thin to keep with the thinness of the design. Also very flexible. And here we have the SIM card, and we've got the 1650 milliamp hour battery. That's a big battery for a device that this is thin, uh, that is this thin if you think about it. Uh, we've also got the non hot swappable micro SD port there, so you can add up to a 32 gigabyte card and have a ton of memory on this thing. And getting the battery cover back on isn't so easy. You have to uh, press it in, in what seems to be 10 places, but there, it's finally on. Okay, so let's talk Super AMOLED. What is Super AMOLED, or we should say Super AMOLED Plus, and why does it matter? Well, if you remember, the Galaxy S smartphones introduced Samsung's proprietary Super AMOLED screen. Samsung is really the only name in town right now when it comes to AMOLED. They sort of have the monopoly on these screens. And AMOLED is incredible in its level of contrast and power savings. So in an AMOLED screen, when something is black, it is truly black. The pixels are turned off unlike uh, a, an LCD screen where, where, where you see black, you might sort of see a grayish, grayish color because it's being illuminated by a backlight. Uh, so up here we've got a, the, the notification strip up here is black. And if we flick it down, you can see a little bit more black. If we flick it back up, it'll, it'll go back up there. It is truly black and the contrast is just amazing. Now let's take a look at a Galaxy S device that has the Super AMOLED screen, not the Super AMOLED Plus the Captivate, right? So they all have the same panel. Let's zoom in and see if we see any difference between Super AMOLED Plus and Super AMOLED. Uh, so this is the same page loaded here. And the contrast looks a little bit better on the left here on the Galaxy S2, but really not that big of a difference. It seems to have crashed the browser there. They are both set to automatic screen brightness. Let's just pull down their notification shades. They're using darker colors in the Galaxy S2 too because it's gingerbread so there's a lot more blacks than there are sort of the gray color but you can get a sense that there's not that much of a difference now that is not the case if we take out say HTC's super LCD screen uh, so here is the Thunderbolt you need to connect the charger here now there's a really big difference again these are both on uh, automatic screen brightness and it almost looks like the Thunderbolt here has a white coating on the screen that's because the backlight is just blasting light onto the entire panel whereas on the Super AMOLED Plus screen only individual pixels that are active are getting uh, getting lit or backlit if you want a technical explanation of how AMOLED works versus LCD, look it up on Wikipedia, but that's sort of the explanation there. And it's very apparent when you compare these devices side by side. Super AMOLED Plus is beautiful, it's gorgeous, 
it doesn't seem to bring that much of a difference uh, over the previous generation Super AMOLED. They look about the same. And, and Samsung's getting kind of funny with the names of these screens. Is the next screen going to be Super AMOLED Plus Plus 2 or something? It's kind of a, a long name that they just keep sort of adding to. So beautiful screen, beautiful hardware on the Samsung Galaxy S2. This thing is fantastic build quality. It's ridiculously thin and so far it feels very powerful with the 1.2 gigahertz dual core uh, Exynos processor, the gig of RAM and a lot of other goodies. Of course a phone is only as good as the software that is running on it and in the next video we're going to talk all about um, Samsung's new TouchWiz interface which does some really cool features, has a lot of interesting gestures built in. You're going to want to stick around for that. So if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if there's something specific you want to see about the Galaxy S2, please leave a comment below and we'll try to cover that. Thanks for watching. That's it for now.